I jumped on a train today. No, really, I actually ran and jumped on a moving train. Doesn't that only happen in movies? I guess not, because I did it, and as far as I know, this isn't a movie, because if it were, I probably wouldn't be on a train feeling like I just went a couple rounds with Mayweather. Or, no, wait, is that the exact kind of thing that happens in movies? Well, it felt pretty real. I mean, it felt more like I was going to crap myself if I didn't make the train, but still, it felt real. Then again, I would be lying if I said there wasn't that little bit of freedom. You know, like at one point it wasn't really up to me whether or not I jumped before the end of the platform, and either way, there was this really special moment when I was running just for the sake of running, but regardless, when I did get on the train, my heart was beating like hell, I was having a mild asthma attack, and I might have peed a little. So, uh... Camera rolling. So I sat down next to this guy who was just totally fried. I mean, he was looking out the window, but there was nothing out there, so I can't imagine what he was looking at. I guess he was just fascinated by his own reflection. And then he looked at me, well... No, actually, maybe he looked through me, and... He flared his lips a little bit. If he really was looking out the window, though, I wouldn't be surprised if he thought I'd just jumped onto a spaceship. You know, I'll bet my little movie moment looked pretty cool to him. And maybe it really did, because after a while he started on this weird existential tangent and apparently I was supposed to have all the answers, and... I guess it's possible he saw the astronaut version of me as some Buddha or something and he wanted to make the most of his time. I guess it's possible the conversational skills were just as unconventional as the introduction, but honestly, I probably could have been a potted plant and it wouldn't have made a difference. He did ask me a couple questions, though, and I hate to say they did hit home. I mean, the guy's looking out the window, or through the window, or at his own reflection, or maybe he was just dead for a second, honestly, I don't know. Anyway, he turns to me and he asked me how I knew we were moving. Well, I figured I'd just run to catch this exact moving train, so there is the first bit of evidence, but really he had a point. See, we were moving so fast, all I really knew was that I would get off in a different place than where I got on, but he asked me to prove that we were staying still and that everything else around us was moving. And obviously I couldn't, but... There was really no way I could prove the opposite without jumping in the opposite direction, and as weird as my day was, I was not up for jumping off a train to prove a point to a stoner. We just sat in silence after that, and I guess I had to accept that either version was possible. See, that's actually a feeling that really pisses me off, though. It's this weird thing where I feel strongly about something. Obviously, the damn train was moving, but I can't articulate why. Like the other day, before I met her, I saw a beetle on the sidewalk. And this thing was huge, like the size of a silver dollar, huge, and some guy I don't know walks up and he starts to check it out, too. And so we're all standing in this loose circle looking down at it, and it was moving super slowly, but it looked determined as hell. And so while this Grandpa Beetle's walking, the guy I don't know, he just... he just steps on it. I swear to God, he just steps on it, and the beetle explodes everywhere. Everyone goes wild, and that's it, but... But the thing was, it really messed with me, though. Why the hell did the guy have to kill the beetle? Really, he just as easily could have kept walking, and I mean, the thing's probably been walking itself for hours just to get to its home a couple blocks away. And the beetle sure as hell can't take a train regardless of whether or not that train's actually moving, and... And then this huge monster of a person comes up and kills him for no reason at all, and I just don't get it. And it really freaked me out, too, because the thing's insides were snow white and the shell was all black, so... It was kind of like someone fried and scrambled a yin-yang on the sidewalk. You know, through the whole thing, I couldn't explain why I felt so damn bad. I still can't. Emma took my mind off it for a while, though.
See, the beetle thing reminded me of her just now, so I guess in a way they're connected. No, I mean, Emma wasn't actually like Grandpa Beetle. She didn't get killed or anything. And if she did, I would have done a lot more than randomly hopping on a train at one in the morning. You know, there's this place on a stairwell in the hotel where we used to meet. That really reminds me of her, too. And what's weird is I only knew her for a week and we didn't even do anything like what you're thinking, right? We, we didn't really even rent a room. We just talked in the lobby a couple times. Last time we ever met there, though, we left through that back stairwell, and it was just insane how confident I felt. Like, I stopped her at a curve in the stairs, and I grabbed her hand, and... and I told her she was beautiful. We both liked that. She really was beautiful, too. Yesterday, when Jeff and I met for coffee in the hotel, I left through that back stairwell again, and I wasn't thinking about Emma for the first time in a while, but I got to that curve in the stairs, and I swear to God, it was surreal. I mean, I stood in that exact same spot, and for a second, I swear to God, I could feel her hand in mine. Like I stood there, whispering our conversation alone on the stairs like a raspy little tape recorder, and, and it was beautiful. It was sad, too, though. She wouldn't have crushed that beetle. You know, maybe it's weird how much I thought about her recently, but she reminds me of a lot of things, or... I don't know, maybe a lot of things remind me of her. Like, before that guy even made me think of the beetle, I was thinking about Emma. My little movie moment? Yeah, Emma felt pretty damn real, too. I met her on July 4th. She was with a group of friends that my friends and I ran into, and, uh, and you know, we both looked nice. I did that thing where I only talked to her the whole night, you know, that thing where, like, other people ask me questions, but I always direct the conversation back to her. I only made eye contact with her. She had beautiful eyes, too. They were this light gold on the outside fading into a yellowish green. They were really pretty, really, really clear. See, you know, my theory is if this were a movie, we would have kissed that night, right? Like, I mean, isn't that just too damn perfect? Think about it. There's, there's this beautiful, patriotic music booming through the park. There's a gorgeous lake somewhere out there, and fireworks are just exploding everywhere. The light, it, it bounces off the water, making us these two perfect silhouettes in the night, and there's people around, but we're alone. It's just us two, these, these, these black shapes outlined in electric prisms watching as the clouds catch fire and then, maybe with a nice low angle, the two silhouettes drift together. And then they merge at the top, ever so slightly linking, and the colors around them intensify. Maybe some Bob Dylan fades in afterwards. I have this other theory, though, that body language is the most important thing a guy can look at. So I sat next to her on the hill overlooking the lake way out there, and she laughed at almost every single one of my crappy jokes, and... And I mean, these jokes were so damn bad, there was no way she didn't like me. And I liked her, too. She was beautiful. Anyway, we're sitting next to each other on the grass, and I cross my legs specifically so they're sort of open to her. And I don't know, maybe subconsciously these things do kind of work, because sure enough, she does the same, and... So we're sitting there, and the fireworks are about to start, and we're both making a sort of greater than symbol with our legs facing each other. So, uh... Camera rolling. <laughs> and then, she killed it. I mean, she kept her hands under her legs the entire time. What a waste of film. And no, don't get me wrong, I mean, we still had a great time, really, I loved the conversation, and we did enjoy each other's company, but, but, but everything Emma said, the way she said everything made it seem like she wanted me to move closer, but it looked like I couldn't move in. Now normally 
Normally I'd be fine with that, but I'm telling you, she was amazing. See, we were both on vacation at the lake, so it's not like I had the rest of my life to do anything, and at the same time, I didn't really want to do anything. When we met before the fireworks, the first thing I told her was that I liked her eyes, and she said thank you in the most genuine way I'd ever heard anyone say thank you. If she'd have wanted to just talk after that, I would have talked for hours, and I would have been completely fine with it. And that's really what ended up happening. No prisms, no silhouettes, no kiss. I just didn't want to stop talking. Yippee, there'll be no wedding bells for today. The next night, Jeff and I met Emma and her friends in the lobby. We sat in a circle in these really uncomfortable striped chairs that were that kind of generic you see in every diner and lobby across America, but for some reason you still find the time to note just how ugly they are. And you know, the entire time Emma was sitting across from me, but she wasn't even looking at me. So I tried the crappy joke tactic again, and it was almost like she was trying extra hard not to hear me. And it really made me hate the whole group conversation sort of vibe, so I tried to slink away afterwards and and I didn't say goodbye to her. Anyway, Emma's friend Jordan does this half skip, half jog kind of a thing to try to catch up with me as I was leaving and she cut right in front of me and she told me not to do anything with Emma. God, that made me angry. See, this whole idea actually of a middleman really pisses me off. Immediately, it makes me think of the beetle again. So here's another one I can't articulate. And you know, I think it's actually the same personality requirement for someone to kill the beetle. Like that beetle did absolutely nothing, but someone out there thinks enough of himself that he finds it necessary to kill the thing, and I just, I just can't comprehend how the hell that beetle affected anyone so much that they actually have to kill it for some personal satisfaction. And See, the same thing happened with Jordan. She has to have this unbelievable sense of ego to throw herself in the middle of Emma and me, and the thing is, the beetle has to die. See, because if anyone else vacations in our moment, Emma and I get to watch our little yin-yang scrambled on the sidewalk, and, you know, really, regardless of however Jordan thought the situation should have turned out, I was choosing to think the train was moving. And I was willing to prove it. So Jordan gave me this long speech about how Emma had all these issues. She told me Emma was afraid of getting too attached to people who she thought couldn't stick around. And Jordan said it was better if we just stayed friends. Ridiculous. See, I wrote it off, figuring if Jordan was willing to throw herself in the middle of it, she was probably just angry that I didn't compliment her eyes in the first place, and... You know, she probably convinced Emma that I wasn't worth it. Unbelievable. And you know, I also figured she was full of it because this isn't a damn movie. I mean, honestly, what's the likelihood Emma has a tragic flaw? After all, we're just two people who met by sheer chance under some fireworks for a short but emotionally brilliant relationship, and yes, I do realize I'm sort of digging myself into a hole here, but I swear to God this was real, though. She was so real. Anyways, I was absolutely convinced that Jordan was out to screw me over, so I walked back to the group and I plopped myself down quite forcefully in an ugly chair, and... You know, I was going for the biggest entrance, bigger jokes, biggest ego approach, but by the time I got back, though, pretty much everyone else was leaving, so... I directed the blunt force of my testosterone, spite, and stupidity directly at Emma. Remember what happens when a cartoon character walks off a cliff? I didn't realize anything was wrong until I looked down. Or I looked up, I guess. We made eye contact for the first time in a couple hours, and I fell. She was smiling, all right, but I could see her holding back tears. Those eyes were so clear, and I saw a lot of pain. They were still beautiful, though. I guess she did like me, and she was just scared of getting attached. God, it was amazing. 
That feeling, you know, where you know you want someone who wants you back? I'm kind of glad I can't articulate that one. It's beautiful. In the moment, though, I felt horrible, and that's why, on the back stairwell on the last night before she left, I didn't go any further than reminding her that she was beautiful. She was, too. I thought that night on the stairs was the last time I would ever see Emma. The last time I would have the pleasure of hearing her laugh at the worst jokes imaginable, and I was okay with that. I would have been okay with just talking. The next morning, though, I figured it would probably be nicer to think about her over a breakfast crepe than it would be to sit in my bed and replay the past like a pathetic little tape recorder. It was really nice and warm by the time I finished eating. Everything normally green was a kind of sweet yellow, and everything normally blue got a little bit lighter. It was that really amazing time of day where no one's still groggy from waking up, but no one's getting tired of the afternoon either. When I was walking back, I felt like that damn falling cartoon character again. There she was carrying her suitcases to the train station. Unbelievable. I carried one of her bags to the train station and then we just kinda stood there, looking at each other all warm and yellow. She hugged me for a really long time, and she told me how amazing it was to have met. I agreed. Then I kissed her. I looked into those absolutely beautiful eyes for the last time, and maybe Bob Dylan should have faded in, but... Instead, a car honked, and she was gone. Maybe that beetle died because everyone's story ends as it should. Maybe I got on the next train after her because there's just nothing else I can do. Maybe though, for the first time in my life, I'm standing still and so is she. And everything else is just moving too fast for me to tell the difference. <laughs>